So a few weeks ago, I did an unboxing of the MacBook Air 2019. At the end of the video, I asked you guys specifically what you wanted to know for my full review. I got a ton of questions. A lot of you want to know the full capabilities of this device. This is Apple's most affordable laptop, and you guys wanted to know how far you could push it. Now I'm going to start off with creatives, and the first application I tested was Adobe Premiere. Now Adobe Premiere is a very CPU intensive application and the MacBook Air only has a dual core processor. So I wasn't expecting it to do that well when you're editing video. Now, if you're scrubbing the timeline, you're gonna get a lot of dropped frames. It doesn't matter if you make proxies or use ProRes, you're gonna get dropped frames just because you need a lot more power. However, you still can edit a video. Like if you need to tap into a project that you worked on another device, you still have enough power to make those changes render the video and move on to the next thing. This is important because let's say you're on vacation and you don't have your main computer with you and you need to make a quick change because your client's not happy with something. At least the MacBook Air 2019 has the capability to do it. Now the rendering time is quite long for an H.264 file. You're looking at 34 minutes and for an H.265 file, you're looking at 35 minutes. However, because this has Thunderbolt 3, you can hook it up to an external GPU. And when I did, that time got halved. In 12 minutes and 34 seconds, it can be rendered using OpenCL, and 11 minutes and 30 seconds using Metal. Now here's the thing, if you're gonna be editing video on this type of device, you're better off using Final Cut Pro. It is just streamlined and optimized so much better for the MacBook, it's not even funny. Even a 4K timeline, I was able to scrub through it. It wasn't perfect, I still dropped a few frames, but not nearly as much as Adobe Premiere. Again, using the example, when you have to quickly change something, you can tap into the device, make those changes, and then render it out. Now, render times in Final Cut are significantly faster than Adobe Premiere, and this is even with background rendering off and not using optimized media. The next question came from developers, and you wanted to know whether or not you can program on a MacBook Air 2019. You absolutely can. Are you gonna have quick compile times compared to other laptops like the MacBook Pro 13 or 15? It's gonna be slower and that's expected again, just like Adobe Premiere compiling code really utilizes the CPU. It took a total of one hour and 55 minutes to compile Mozilla Firefox compared to an hour and 45 minutes using an HP NV i7 laptop. That's a 10 minute difference, so it's not that big of a deal. And if you want even faster compiling times, my suggestion is to pay a couple hundred dollars more and get the MacBook Pro 13 inch. Now, a lot of you wanted to know whether or not you could game on a MacBook Air 2019. And the short answer is kind of. You can play simple games like Tetris, Solitaire, or any older titles that don't use a lot of graphical power. But if you want to play modern titles on this device, it's just not happening. I was able to play Fortnite with 30 frames per second, which is kind of decent with all the settings set to low. But the problem is because the GPU and CPU bottleneck each other, you get a lot of drop frames. Now, if you want to increase the frames per second, I hooked it up to an external GPU and the frames per second got bumped up to 60 frames. But again, you're still going to get a lot of drop frames because of the bottleneck. Even Deus Ex Mankind, you cannot play it on this laptop unless you hook it up to an external GPU because it's just not possible. Diablo 3 is playable as well, but like I said before, expect some dropped frames. So this is quite interesting. A lot of you actually wanted to know whether you could use Blender on this or any sort of 3D work in AutoCAD. And the short answer is you can do it. It's just a painful process. These applications are very CPU and GPU intensive and you really need to move up to a more expensive MacBook Pro to utilize those applications. Now, one of the big questions was about how many tabs you can have open in Chrome. So I opened up 14 to 15 tabs. I had Netflix playing in two, Prime Video in the other. I had Spotify open playing music, my email application and TweetDeck. It did it fine, but as I was typing a document, there was the odd slowdown. And unlike Windows where it will like stall and you have to wait, Mac does it in a different way. You'll see like your text trying to catch up to what you're doing as opposed to like just stalling and then going. So it can do basic productivity, but it will start to slow down when you have too many things going on. One other question was about Lightroom. You wanted to know how many photos you could have loaded up and editing at the same time. So I have about 53 photos here. These are all raw files from the Sony a7 III. I have them all loaded up in Lightroom right now, and I have zero issues changing between all of these. There's a small little like 
latency, which is like expected because these files are about 50 megabytes each. But this laptop has zero issues handling it. I can easily change the colors without any slowdown. I can change the effects. Overall, it's a pretty smooth experience. The only time it does slow down in Lightroom or even Photoshop, for example, is when you're applying a lot of filters. It has to process that. So again, it taxes the CPU and you will notice a little bit of lag. But if you're editing the odd photo or even a bunch of photos, this laptop will be able to handle it fine. So here's the bottom line. The MacBook Air 2019 is fantastic for general productivity. It can basically do all the general stuff that most people do 90% of the time. The cool thing though, is the fact that you actually get a Thunderbolt 3 port. I find most PC laptops that use a Y series processor only give you USB type C and they do this to try to upsell you to a more expensive laptop. Being able to transfer data faster on this laptop or hook it up to an external GPU is a bonus that other laptops don't have when they use Y series processors. Now, is this a great laptop for student? Absolutely. You have good battery life, small portable form factor, and it basically takes care of 90% of your needs. I like the fact that I can jump in and jump out of more intensive applications. Anyways, that wraps up my review of the MacBook Air 2019. I hope I answered your questions. If you have any more, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to check out the sexy, sexy matrix skin by dbrand, I'll place a link in the description down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.